2020 is finally over. We got so many great films. We had Dune, Black Widow, The Eternals, Less Than Soho, Nightmare Alley. Oh, wait. Aloha, everybody. This is Alex from Helmer's Movie Mania podcast. This is our first episode, and we're going to be bringing you cinema-related content from blockbuster comic book films to classic 40s, 50s film noirs on a day-to-day basis. Today is our top five list. We're going to see a lot of top five lists for us. We love ranking films. And so today's top five list is basically going to be a ranking of the films that are going to be coming out in, the 20, in 2021, so the next batch of films that we're going to get to see. Um, and then we're going to be talking about the film of the day, which is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Came out a couple weeks ago, but we're going to talk about it today. Make sure uh, to hit that like button, subscribe, comment, hit the bell icon to get notifications about our, uh, again, our day-to-day movie-related content. It's really important that you guys do that. We just started, so it's really important that you guys support this channel. We really think this can take off in a really big way. And please, 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 Pretty please. Um, support this channel. I promise you won't regret it. Luckily for you guys, you won't be looking at my face for this entire video. No, God! No, God, please, no! Uh, let me get you to my co-host. He is the film writer over at Clapper.uk, the former written content editor for the Wilson Beacon, as well as a film ma- major over at Occidental and Amateur Filmmaker. And most importantly, my best friend. No, sorry, I'm not that cheesy. Um, and uh, his name is Alex Holmes. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm good, thanks. Uh, it's good to be here, Helmer. Yeah. Uh, let's get over to your list. Again, top five most anticipated for 2021. A lot of these films we thought we'd see already by the beginning of January 2020. We thought for sure we'd see Dune already, see uh, No Time to Die, um, Last Night in Soho, all these films. But, you know, they got moved over to 2021. And like you said, you know, with all of these, so many movies just being pushed to 2021, it's going to be, it was pretty hard to make this list because there's just going to be so many, you know, week, every week is going to be the next blockbuster or, you know, a huge indie hit or something. So, it was hard, but I think I narrowed it yeah. down to some pretty good picks. Um, so I guess I'll start off with my honorable mention. So um, Dune is my my uh, first honorable, honorable mention. You know, we thought it would see it back last year. Um, it's going to be in theaters and H- on HBO Max at the same time next year. Hopefully you get to see this one in theaters because it's going to be one of the biggest movies, one of the biggest blockbusters for sure of the year. It's Denis Villeneuve's yeah. next film. You've got a killer cast, um, a great, uh, based on a great, you know, source material. It's a great book as well and um it's definitely going to be better than david lynch's adaptation (laughs) um yeah yeah, high bar to beat but of course yeah Yeah, not not really a high bar (laughs) yeah but um okay so my next honorable mention is um blonde which is the next film by andrew dominic Mm -hmm. who uh, directed the assassination of jesse james by the coward robert ford and this stars anna de armas as marilyn monroe and if that's not enough to get you interested then i don't know what is um definitely excited for that um my next up is next goal wins which is taika waititi's next project which would have me on board anyway but with a cast um like it includes army hammer michael fassbender michael fassbender classic yeah really angry coach you know you can't beat that yeah sounds awesome yeah that's going to be a comedy gold for sure um and then my next honorable mention is don't look up also a comedy from uh the next one from adam mckay uh, I think Leonardo DiCaprio, you've got That's Meryl awesome. Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, definitely going to be, uh, you know, I loved Vice, I love The Big Short. I know not everyone is so big in those films, but for me, I just love his style. And The thing is, really the only reason I was thinking of putting that on my list, just the cast is like so remarkable, but it seems just a bit too good to be true. You know, you have such a big cast right. and it could be another... Um, uh you know what was the film with uh emma stone uh all, you know all those actors directed by oh my uh, god um the one, movie 43 more, uh, yeah movie 43 yeah. yeah that's what i was thinking i was I, I was close to putting it on my list but i was just thinking like adam mckay is a good director yeah but he has been he's been a bit rocky sometimes but I that's just, the only yeah, reason i didn't put on my list i was just thinking you know meryl streep kate blanchett Leonardo dicaprio is a bit too good to be true let me just see the trailer see 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 what it looks like i just think i i think um you know vice didn't get a great reception and i feel like yeah. i just i enjoyed it a lot anyway so even if it is bad you know i think i'm yeah. still gonna have a good Agreed. time with it yeah um and then my final honorable honorable mention is uh the beatles get back which is actually a documentary oh. Oh. um it's peter jackson's next documentary he did oh um they shall not grow old which is a really great um, world war one doc and this is i think um this is like lost footage of the beatles recording get back um <laughs> Of, of a Beatles recording, Let It Be in, in studio. And I'm a huge Beatles fan. Um, and mm-hmm. I love 
his last documentary. So definitely really excited for this. All right, what are yeah. your uh, honorable mentions? Great picks. Um, so yeah, I can do my honorable mentions. So my first honorable mention is uh, going to be Mission Impossible 7, um, directed by the same director as the previous two, Rogue Nation and uh, Fallout, Christ Christopher McQuarrie. Um, so this film, of course, Tom Cruise, uh, Simon Pegg, Ving Rhames, um, Rebecca Ferguson, all, all the classic uh, Mission Impossible crew that we know and love, they're returning. And then we also have a great, um, we have a great cast that's uh, coming in for the first time. Haley Atwell is going to be in this one. Uh, Shea Wiggum, Henry Zerny. He was in, He was the dad in Ready or Not. He was also, he was in the first Mission Impossible, which I saw for the first time recently, actually. But um, yeah, he was the, he was, he had a small part to play in that film. And so he's returning for this one. And apparently this is going to be a two part. I heard it was going to be a two parter. So um, there's going to, Mission Impossible 8 is going to play into the end of Mission, po Mission Impossible 7. And so uh, my next one I'm going to mention is the film Ruin, which I told you about yesterday. So I'm really excited about it. But uh, for those, nobody, not a lot of people have really heard about this film, but let me just read you the premise. I promise you'll be interested. Um, a former Nazi captain anonymously travels to the ruins of post-World War II Germany, seeking to atone for his crimes by hunting down the members of his SS death squad who once worked under him. Now, if that doesn't so sound exciting, I don't know what does. I mean, that just sounds like an awesome concept. Um, the director, I believe, um, he, he's the same director. He directed Macbeth, which I, I've seen clips of it. It is a visually stunning film. He also directed Assassin's Creed, which isn't as stunning. But um, yeah, uh, I'm really excited mostly because of the premise. Margot Robbie is going to be in this one, which is nice. So my next honorable mention is going to be Babylon. Uh, I have a slight suspicion that it might be on someone else's list. But of course, it's going to be um, Damien Chazelle's next film. Um, oh, I'm seeing his might be released in 2022, which kind of sucks. But um, anyways, uh, Damien Chazelle's next film, he's already, what, he might, in his 30s, early 40s maybe, and he's already become one of the best directors um, working today. Um, Whiplash and La La Land, I'm a huge fan of both of those, and I'm a fan of First Man, although I didn't like it as much. But um, when you, Whiplash is in my top 10 films of all time, and La La Land's in my top 20, top 30. I love both of those films to death. So anything that this guy does, I'll be up for, but this one is going to be about uh, the Hollywood transition to the talkies, which sounds just so awesome. Uh, Brad Pitt is going to be in it, Marco Robbie, um, uh, Toby Maguire. So it just sounds so awesome. I couldn't leave it off my list. Uh, the next film on my list is going to be The Last Duel, which is uh, Ridley Scott's next film. It stars Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. I'm a sucker for any film that those two do together. Um, they're so awesome together. And then um, Adam Driver is also going to be in this film. Next one I have is Killers of the Flower Moon, um, which oh, is Martin Scorsese's next yeah. film, uh, Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, just that cast alone, Robert De Niro and, um, and Leonardo DiCaprio are like, they're basically the two main Scorsese stars in any of his, I, I'd say that they were two stars that occur or appear in his films the most. They're the two actors he loves the most. And I'm so excited for this film. It's kind of a murder mystery type thing which is right down my alley. And so I couldn't be more excited for this one. On is Mike Mills' next movie. He directed 20th Century Women, which I loved. Beginners, which I also loved. And um, it stars Joaquin Phoenix as, and it's, it's sort of like a road trip movie, I think. Um, there's not that much that's known about this. The plot has been kind of kept under wraps. Um, but honestly, for me, Mike Mills' involvement is enough for me to get excited about mm -hmm. this. I love, I've seen 20th Century Women like three times, one of my favorite movies. And um, I think you've also got a cinematographer, Robbie Ryan, is, is attached to, uh, did, um, he did Marriage Story and The Favorite. Mm -hmm. He's a great cinematographer. So he's got he, The North Man by Robert Eggers. He did The Lighthouse. He did um, The Witch, great horror director. And now he's doing a Viking revenge tale uh, with a great cast. You got Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicole Kidman, Alexander Skarsgård, Ethan Hawke, Willem Dafoe, Ralph Ineson. Um, this is just a supreme cast. And not many directors really take on them. Um, I've never seen that many films about Vikings. So that's going to yeah. be interesting. And he's um, one of the most talented directors, I think, of his generation. Even if I didn't, I didn't love, you know, The Lighthouse or The Witch, I like them both. But I, I, mm -hmm. there's definitely a very strong, like, visual style with them. Um, he's great at creating, like, claustrophobic situations. And um, both films, I think, think, can be comparable to some of Kubrick's work, at least The Shining, you know, in terms of how they mess with your head and... Um, Especially the lighthouse for sure. That one's yeah uh, a mind bender. 
So yeah, really excited for the North fan. Yeah, sounds really great. So uh, my number five is actually, it's going to be Spider-Man 3. Uh, I wouldn't be as excited for this one as I am, uh, as I'm just because the cast, um, of course, we've gotten so many announcements recently about Spider-Man 3. Um, uh, most recently, Alfred Molina is coming back as Dr. Octopus. Um, you got Willem Dafoe's rumored to be in the cast coming back um, as uh, Green Goblin. And then um, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is rumored to be coming back. Um, it just, the cast is just pretty insane. Um, Jamie Foxx is Electro. And I also heard, I was very weary about this, just considering Jamie Foxx is Electro, why? And then I heard that they were going to do a kind of, um, they were bringing these characters back as different version, alternate versions of their characters, which could be, opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. Um, a lot of creative avenues they could go in. Um, and then my number four is going to be Last Night in Soho which is uh, Edgar Wright's new film. It was supposed to, be come, so supposed to come out last year, didn't. Um, but it is basically about a uh, young girl who travels back to the 60s. Um, and it's a mystery thriller type film. Um, uh, Thomas McKenzie stars in it. Anna Taylor Joy, Matt Smith, Terrence Stamp, Diana Rigg. She just passed away. So I'm surprised to see maybe this is her last film. That uh, leads me pretty well into my number three, which is also um, oh, okay. last night. So um, yeah, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, I thought we'd get it last year, um, but it's only a few months now. It's, I think, April uh, release date. And yeah, Edgar Wright's amazing. Uh, this is his first film that's, I feel like, that's not, doesn't have like a comedy uh, uh, angle to it, right? You know, his coordinator trilogy was comedy, and then Baby Driver had some comedic moments. Same with, you know, and then Scott Pilgrim was pretty com comedic. So doing a straight up horror just seems really interesting. And yeah, like you said, you got Diana Rigg. I, I'm pretty sure it is her last performance. So that's going to be uh, something special. And then um, also Matt Smith, you know, who's uh, recently gone into like a crown and he's pretty, he's, he's good in that. All right. Yes. Yeah, so and my number two, you called it is uh, Babylon. Oh, okay. Also, um, I mean, uh, you originally, I think uh, Emerson was going to be in this. I was super excited, but then she dropped out. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I was pretty sad, but then it turned out she's replaced by Margot Robbie. So, you know, no, uh, no lot, huge loss there. Um, I'm definitely, I love Damon Chazelle. I think all three of his films, I haven't seen his debut, but um, Whiplash, La La Land, First Man, they've all been 10 out of 10s for me. Uh, so he's kind of a perfect, he's got a perfect track record with me. Um, let's see if he can keep it up. Awesome. So my number three is going to be No Time to Die. Um, of course, I'm a James Bond stan. I love, love, love the James Bond series. Um, and No Time to Die is the final D Daniel Craig Bond film, of course, directed by Carrie, Funi Carrie Fukunaga. I don't know how that, I'm pronouncing that right. But um, basically, yeah, No Time to Die. Um, the plot has kind of been kept under wraps. I'm not sure what it's about it. It's about yet, quite yet. Um, there's definitely going to be a couple of revelations in here. Um, Christoph Waltz is coming back um, as Blofeld. I love Christoph Waltz. He's one of my favorite actors. Rami Malek is going to be the villain in here. Leah Le Le Sedu, Sedu, I don't know how to pronounce her name either, but uh, she's coming back. Um, and uh, again, I'm a sucker for any Bond film. Uh, hopefully this can get the franchise back on track. I wasn't the huge, hugest fan of, um, of Spectre, uh, although I do love Skyfall. So I'm really excited for this one. And then my number two is Dune, of course. So um, I have known nothing of the Dune um, mythos, really. I've never read the books. My only experience from the series is seeing um, David Lynch's 84 version, and I did not like that film at all. I'm not a huge David Lynch fan in the first, first place, but that film really, it, it didn't sit right. It didn't sit right with me. Um, and uh, from what I've heard, though, this new Dune film looks to be a um, kind of uh, more truthful to how the novels were. And uh, the way people described it for me is basically a Star Wars, Game of Thrones type hybrid. And it's a very complex story, very complex. Um, I've been told by various sources about just basically the, um, the, the whole concept of Dune. And um, hopefully it's not overly confusing. Uh, I mean, this is basically a series that's the length even uh, even uh, higher than Game of Thrones, or longer than Game of Thrones, and Game of Thrones in one movie wouldn't work out very well. So hopefully this film isn't too convoluted, but I'm keeping my hopes up.
Yeah, I think they're that's, supposed to, they, they said they're going to do two parts, right, to Dune? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hopefully it makes a lot of money because... I don't know. This the budget for this film was very was very high. So yeah, hopefully this film makes a lot of money. Uh, it's for now still releasing on HBO Max, um, which obviously hasn't sat uh, hasn't sat right with uh, Denis Villeneuve. All right, so my number one is um, Soggy, which actually is not the official title of the film. It's um, the working title for Paul Thomas Anderson's next project. Oh, okay. Which is. Um, set in uh, 70s high school in, in San, the San Fernando Valley, I think. Um, and you've got a pretty good cast in this. You've got, um, well, they haven't announced, I don't think they've announced all the names, um, but you've got Bradley Cooper, um, Cooper Hoffman, who is actually Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. So hopefully the, the oh, acting, talent, uh, acting gene runs in the family. Um, Benny Safdie, the director, is in it. And Alna Heim, um, one of the members of the Heim um, band so that's going to be pretty interesting um i love the cast i love all those uh, people i don't i don't know about hoffman but um you know his dad was a great actor and then paul thomas anderson just anything he does is, is pretty much gold and i love high school movies also you know set in the 70s even better so hopefully this is a return to that kind of boogie nights type style you know yeah. that's probably one of probably my favorite film from him mm -hmm. and um yeah this just seems like right up my alley yeah, no, that sounds really good as well. I'm getting kind of a Dazed and Confused vibe from it, which oh, sounds yeah. really awesome. And Dazed and Confused is one of my favorite films. So that sounds great. Uh, so my number fil number one film, I was actually surprised that this was my number one when I picked out my list. Um, but um, it is The Suicide Squad from James Gunn. Um, now, I've loved, loved, loved everything I've seen from The Suicide Squad film, or at least uh, from what we've seen. We haven't gotten an official trailer yet. But um, it looks to be an amazing, an amazing uh, film from James Gunn. Uh, it's going to be rated R. It's supposed to be an extremely violent film. And it's supposed to be also be very campy, but very edgy at the same time, which sounds like an awesome combination. Um, I'm a huge fan of James Gunn. Um, and so this just sounds awesome, especially uh, the characters that we've got or that, that, that are announced for this film. Uh, you got not just the the harley quinns of the world and the king sharks of the world but you got polka dot man you got the peacemaker i mean this film and taika watiti's also i'm guessing he's voicing king shark in this film which um could turn out very well um what, what am i could it will turn out very well um and i'm extremely excited for this one hopefully it can well it's not it can't be any worse than the david Ayer's suicide squad film but i'm so excited for how this one turns out so that is my number one most anticipated nice yeah that, that looks really good i'm really happy they're kind of taking it in like a it seems what seems like a campy direction like a more yeah. comedic type area i mean everything else in this dceu most of it for mm -hmm. me has not worked all the serious especially like the suicide squad it took itself mm -hmm. way too seriously and so this one or at least it kind of tried to do this weird comedic blend i don't know mm -hmm. but um you know with james gunn you know he's an expert in that area that's going to be amazing for sure. Probably my most anticipated superhero release. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and so that those are our lists. Uh, please let us know in the comments, what are your most anticipated films for 2021? Let us know down in the comments. And again, like the video, subscribe if you haven't, ring the bell to stay notified on all our latest content. And uh, go over to our website. It's going to be over in the description of the video, as well as the Instagram for the channel. Now we're going to go over to the film of the day, which is, of course, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is a, uh, it came out on December 14th, and it is basically about, uh, tensions are basically rising when uh, singer Ma Rainey and her band gathered a recording studio in 1927 Chicago. Uh, the film is, uh, it's directed by George C. Wolfe and stars the late Chadwick Boseman as well as Viola Davis. So, uh, Holmes, do you want to get us started? What do you think of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? Sure, yeah. Um, so I had a, you know, there's a, a kind of a bar for me with like, this is based on a play. It's based on August Wilson play. I don't typically love, you know, play to film adaptations. I just find, you know, I like film for a reason and there's a reason I like it more than play, than plays. So um, it's kind of a bar for me to get over with. Um, I, the, for example, the last um, adaptation, August Wilson play, Fences, um, which was also produced by Denzel Washington, who produced this film. It was directed by him as well. Um, I didn't love that film. I Well, first of all, I, I will say, like, I, I saw it in a the theater with, um, it was a, like a school field trip, so there was a lot of noise, and you couldn't really pay attention. But 
Um, that said, I, I thought it was very kind of talky and over dramatic at times, and I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, but I think Ma Rainey's Black Bottom was a, a step up from that. I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Um, the runtime went by pretty fast for me. It felt like an hour long movie. It's only an hour and a half, so um, that helps. Um, I didn't love it. It's not, you know, one of my favorites of the year. I'm, um, a lot of people say it's going to get like a Best Picture nomination. I don't know if I think it deserves that. Um, but definitely maybe some acting awards. You know, Chadwick Boseman is amazing in this film, um, as is Viola Davis. Um, basically, it's an ensemble. I really like that aspect to it. Um, all the actors do a really good job kind of bouncing off of each other. And the script is, um, you know, based on the play, the play is really good in terms of there's just a lot of dialogue going back and forth, a lot of, um, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that kind of aspect to it. It made it feel a lot more fun kind of than I thought it would be. Um, I will say though, the ending kind of fizzled out for me. I didn't, it felt like it kind of didn't really go anywhere. It had a great setup with all these characters and all, they're all brought to life so well by the actors, um, including Coleman Domingo, by the way, is probably my, after Bozeman and Davis, my favorite actor in this, um, who plays um, the, the band leader basically. And he does a really great job and they're all the, the characters just feel so um, fleshed out pretty much, especially for an hour and a half movie. Um, but the ending kind of just left me a little bit like wanting more. I wasn't really sure like why it ended up there. There's like one decision a character makes that I didn't completely understand. And I felt like maybe if there's more time, um, we could have built up to it better. Um, but I, other than that, I enjoyed it. The music was also really good. It's like uh, blues music. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, it's a, a pretty solid movie. Definitely not one of my favorites, but I, I enjoyed it. What about you, Helmer? Yeah, so uh, here's a, uh, a nice little re revelation. I have the same thoughts as you do. I basically agree with literally everything you said, which is not something you see very rarely. Um, I thought this film was good. Um, I thought it was solid. Um, I definitely, there are definitely things that I loved about it, things that I weren't, wasn't so hot on, but overall, I didn't think it set it kind of reached the bar that I was um, I, I set for this film myself just because it has gotten so much Oscar buzz and so for me it really hasn't uh, kind of reached that bar unfortunately um, so let me just get to my quick pros Viola Davis is absolutely magnificent in this film she is so good she is basically the heart and soul of this film um, every time she walks in a room they make they make you i guess they make you know that she's basically she is the the she's the she's basically the shit of the film <laughs> she is the the central figure in the film she's the person you don't want to mess with um when she walks in a room walks in a room you don't want to you want to disappoint her you don't want to disrespectful dis, disrespect disrespect her um you don't want to do any of that because you know that she's going to come down hard on you um you know that right away viola davis's performance uh, she's so incredibly intimidating. Every time she, when she talks to someone, she just towers over them. She's just so intimidating. Her facial expressions, her uh, her posture, her kind of the way she moves around, even the way she sits with her legs kind of like spread out. She everything she does is incredibly well done. Uh, she definitely, I definitely have her number one on my Oscar list for best actress. She this is probably the best performance I've seen from her, and she was in that beats out. I mean, that it, it, it's a pretty competitive area because she was amazing in the five minutes she was uh, in, in Doubt, the, the film Doubt. She was in that for like five minutes and her performance was amazing in that. And this was even better. She, I just loved her in this film. There's a scene uh, with involving a Coke bottle. And um, I guess I'll spoil some of it. It's not a big scene, but it's basically, basically she says, oh, before we start the music, I need to have, you know, a Coke to, to drink. And the guy says, oh, sorry, I forgot the Coke. And the film sets the character up in such a way where when the guy says, oh, I don't have a Coke for you, I said to myself, oh, my God, this is, why, why, why do you do this? This is not good. Um, and so the film did a really good job of setting up her character. I really enjoyed Viola Davis' performance. Um, and then Chadwick Boseman is very good as well. I wouldn't say that his performance was great necessarily. I had a lot of problems with his character just because I felt like his character was definitely rushed. Um, the ending, I, there are, I had a lot of problems. His acting was very good. It's just that I didn't feel any of it because the structure of the film felt very rushed. Like for example, 38 minutes into the film, he had his first monologue. It was about his interactions with the white man. And so it was a very good monologue. 
um, very meaningful. However, it happened so randomly in the film, like everybody, all the band members were just laughing, having a good time. They make fun of him and all of a sudden he starts crying. It just didn't sit right with me just because it felt a bit out of place and a bit rushed. This film is only an hour and a half. It definitely could have used an extra 20 minutes, an extra 15, 20 minutes. It just went by so, so quickly. And a lot, Bozeman has about two, maybe two to three monologues in this film that just didn't, it didn't reach that emotional peak that it could have for me. Um, and then the ending did not sit right with me at all. I just felt it was very overblown and very, um, it just, I, it felt very rushed. Um, it's very August Wilson y. I, 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 I get where she was coming from. And I under, I, I, uh, again, I've, I've read Fences, so I understand her kind of writing style. It's, it's something that it's so, very but August, August Wilson. Wilson the, um, but he's a man, I think, right? Wow, that's embarrassing, but the show will go on. I, felt the direction is very lacking in areas. I just felt it kind of, it sums up my opinion in just 21st century directing in general, just not a lot of camera movement, too many close-ups, um, too many shot reverse shot sequences. Um, so it, there's not much from the direction that I took away from in this film. I guess we can get, we can go to our ratings now. Um, Holmes, what would your rating be for this film? Um, I would say a, a six out of ten, solid six out of ten. Yeah, I um, also agreed with everything you said. I felt like uh, it's definitely not a very memorable film. It was one I enjoyed in the moment, but as soon as it was over, I was like, oh, I was just kind of like a shrug, you know. Yeah. Um, also, I just one comment on the direction. Like, uh, I definitely agree. I think it was kind of lackluster, but I, I think it was stronger than the fences direction, at least from what I remembered. Mm -hmm. Felt a little bit more alive, and um, the one thing I did enjoy, I lo I like really like the colors to the film. It had a very like kind of the Sequia yellow the yellow almost. undertone was very well yeah, done. Yeah, the yellow, yeah, yeah. And, and that and then, really like, enjoyed that. Whenever Ma Rainey was on screen, her skin was like glistening almost. Oh, she yeah, was you could wedding. Yeah, and, it, and her really, yellow and the, and her yeah. yellow costume really I really thought that added a lot to the character. And it also helped with that coke scene because she was saying talking about how hot she was and then she was like sweating. Yeah, exactly. Sweating. So that yeah. was um good. But also with the editing, I felt like it was just too fast. There were too many unnecessary yeah. cuts. There like, was there one good edited scene. It was the scene where the kid with the stutter was, they were recording. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a good scene. Yeah, the editing, yeah. that warranted fast editing. Like, sequences like that weren't fast editing, but other sequences where people are just talking. Like, I rather yeah, like like, were, um... feel the atmosphere more where the camera's just, like, revolving over the room rather than just show me this person's face and show me this person. Like, yeah, just... there were moments where, like, the camera was doing, like, a sort of spin thing, and it was like, oh, okay, this is going to be cool, but then they just cut it abruptly. Yeah. And it was, like, kind of strange. Um so yeah, um, but um, yeah, the film, I think it was solid six out of 10, I feel like is a um, pretty good score. I think um, I haven't seen like Sound of Metal or most of the other performances that are supposed to be in the best actor consideration. So I'd say Chadwick Boseman is up there for me. Um, I think I liked his performance maybe a little bit more than you did, but I also see what you said about the monologues. They did kind of come out of nowhere. And I've I'd also heard that he had like two really good monologues and so I had pretty high expectations and they kind of fell short of that. But I still think it was a good performance and um, the actors all around, especially even the smaller ones like um, Glenn Tur Turman as Toledo and um, even Jeremy Shamos, who was in, in Better Call Saul, actually. The, um, oh, the, really? He was uh, in the se first season. He was like that, the guy who stole the money, who like embezzled the money. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't. Oh, and he okay. was like the, the one white guy in the, in the movie. So, okay. Um, Oh yeah, and speaking of which, I, I also enjoyed the commentary. They had some sort of some social commentary. Yeah. On, um, especially with regards to Viola Davis's character and like the reasons she was so stubborn, I guess, and that, yeah, well, she had to be so. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and just the petty things well. in order to assert power on a small scale, despite in the grand scheme scheme of things, her not having a lot of power just because she's a black woman in 1927. Yeah. At like, first, you're like, Wait, why is she doing this? That you yeah. don't understand. You're like, oh, she's kind of like holding up the process, but then you realize. And, and yeah, like the, yeah, the scene at the really end really. where all she has to do is sign the papers, that the release papers that the guy is giving her. And even that, she's just trying to assert as much power over she can over the white man because it's the only, her music is the only avenue that she can do it, do it by. Yeah, and then that last scene, the very last scene, they don't even have any dialogue in that scene, but it kind of just, it like, uh, I don't know, it's like a nice uh, coda, I guess, to the film that kind of exactly. solidifies that whole theme. And 
you know, there's like, it, well, it does hit pretty hard, I guess, a little bit in terms of that, those themes. Yeah. What's your score, Homer? Uh, so I'm going to be giving this a seven out of 10. Uh, not one of my favorites of the year, but good solid film. Uh, so thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? Sound off on the comments below. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, this has been a success, I guess, <laughs> besides my August Wilson mess up. I'm really embarrassed about that, but eh, what are you going to do? Uh, so join us next time. This is, I'm Alex. This is Alex signing off. Thank you all for listening. Have a good day.